completely head on agree um but just this once i think um no so um this is developer update if you guys haven't heard this was in um the big reveal summer party like um what do you call it anniversary stream um they talked about multiple updates, and a lot of people didn't believe that these would be coming out because it's a lot of empty promises that de uh, the developers have been doing lately. And that's why when they came up with all these things, um, a lot of people were kind of laughing off like, this is not going to happen. Well, here it is. It's literally happening before us. A lot of things have already been happening like crazy, and it's been amazing. It's been awesome. And I personally have been a big fan of their changes. Uh, my issue with Dead by Daylight and why I've been quitting is because of these issues that have been stagnant and it's made the killer feel helpless it's made this game just feel like a laughing stock of a horror game and it doesn't even feel like that anymore um the way that they're doing these updates and what they're coming out with is great one of the biggest things is um how they're going to change gameplay and perks let's jump into it so um okay so overall progression system let's get really into that um so more or less they're talking about how much time it takes for you to like Put new perks on every character and it says you need to play an estimated average of 4.1 hours every day every single time a chapter releases no wonder people were getting stressed out including myself over these grinds because like that's that's bullshit with this new system it'll average to one hour each day that's that's great and that's not even factoring blood point bonuses from events perks or offerings that's great in other words, this is the single largest reduction to grind we've ever made, cutting it by roughly 75%. That's crazy. That's perfect. I think this will definitely bring people back into the game, and it needs to. It needs to, or else this game is going to die, and it's been dying. This game has literally been dying. So, it, how's the... You've been dying. Okay, we'll do nothing, so. This game is literally... Okay, I just want to make sure I can actually hear myself. Um, so... Unlocking perks, um, this is one of my favorite things that they did, this is how they're actually going to make um, reducing the grind a big deal. Basically, how it works is um, they're making prestige unlimited, right? And they're making prestige more of a thing like how it would be in like an actual uh, shooter game like Call of Duty, where it's like, oh, wow, you're prestige to this level. That means you play this for an actual long time. Except the first six levels will actually matter. And I really like what they're doing here. What the, what's happening now is you prestige a character, you lose all your add-ons, all your items, all that, and it sucks. What's happening now is when you prestige, your tier 1, tier 2, and tier 3 of your perks um, will go up according with your tiers. So, here's what I mean. Um, instead of you, like I did with Nemesis, um, having to go all the way to tier uh, prestige 3 to get your prestige items, and then having to just grind for all the perks... What happens now is, let's say you have one killer, and they have their base kit um, perks. Once you prestige once, every single killer, or survivor for that matter, will have that tier 1 version of those perks. Without you having to go through the blood web and grab them. When you prestige again, it's tier 2. Do it again, tier 3. For all of them. That reduces the grind by a lot. And then the cool thing, which is why I want to... The, why we're streaming right now what we're doing um prestiging to get your skins like the uh, the bloody clothing um you'll actually have to uh do prestige four five and six so it's very interesting i love it it's it's looking great the updates are looking great and i'm i'm heavily um i'm very excited to see where this goes so um that's just my my thought so let's keep going no more resets. Prestiging has always been a bit of a dilemma. Do you give up everything? Yep, all right, all right. Went over that. Um, expand prestige. All right, went over that. Shrine of Secrets. Um, not a big deal to me, but I'll just say it just because. Um, basically, when you purchase the perks with Shrine of Secrets, it'll make um, the tier one version of it immediately available on all killers and whatnot. Um, so, yeah. It's just, it's okay. Um, hold on. I got a crack on back. Ooh, my back is so bad. So transitioning to the new system, blah 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 blah. blah, blah. Let's keep going. Um, matchmaking incentives. So um, there's a few incentives here, which I think is good. Um, a lot of newer players are very attracted to blood webs or uh, you know blood points because they need it, and I don't blame them. So what you'll see a lot now um, with this new matchmaking incentives, which I really enjoy, is because um, everyone plays Survivor, but like Killer is just so unbearable now. Like nobody wants to play it, especially with how easy it is to play Survivor now. Like the fact you can, like, basically heal in, like, less than 30 seconds. 
that's like, like it's, it's almost no point unless you want to tunnel someone you know so like i okay moving forward though with what i'm talking about um what's going to happen is you will get a boost in blood points whatever spot you need to be put in based on your region for example let's say there's not enough killers on most likely um you'll get like a 75 percent bonus in blood points if you play killer right very interesting very cool pretty pog right that's that's what you want um let's keep going um incentives yeah okay uh gameplay updates in the past, individual first, we've been rebalancing. Okay, yeah, they're just talking about the rebalances. Generator speeds. Here's where this gets good. This is my favorite whole thing here. Of course, I'm a killer main, but I do play Survivor a lot, and you'll see that I play Survivor a lot to just to, like, detox from, like, all the stress I have. This is going to be very important, and I want to definitely go over this. So, um, just give me a moment here while I fanboy over this. So, not, um, basically what they say here is that generator speeds, you are almost needing, and you, you really do, um, a bunch of slowdown perks in order to even have a chance as killer because the gens just pop too fast. I think there's an issue with a lot of the things that happen with Deadbody, like, especially for example, starting too close together always. I think that's an issue. Um, but um, the added 10 seconds to each generator um, in order to power it, they have never mess with generators since probably the fucking beginning of the game and the fact that they did says a lot like this is a big change and it's great it is great so i'm oh, <laughs> um kicking a generator will now instantly remove 2.5 percent of maximum progress that's also crazy that is crazy that's amazing what happened before is quite literally you would have to just ignore gens because let's say you did kick it which like let's say like take three to four seconds a survivor could just literally the next second tap it in less than like probably half a second and that's it that's it probably less than half a second tap this tap tap the gen be on with this day and you just wasted so much time and you can do it again and again and again and you kicking it would make no difference well you'll see like i've done this before too i'm just just saying you know, i'm done I, I, I totally don't farm but you know what happened is you'll be kicking a gen right side to a survivor doing the gen and if you don't attack that survivor, he will literally get that gen done while you're kicking it right in his fucking face. So, of course, they're going to laugh at you. They're, you're not a scary killer anymore. So, this not only helps with the gameplay, but um, it does give power back to the killer when it comes to actually kicking the gen. Um, so, it's amazing. It's, it's really good. Um, general killer improvements. There's a lot of M1 killers that are bad. That's always what you hear. M1 killer, M1 killer, M1 killer. This will make it so that M1 killers actually are a little bit more viable, in my opinion. So, um, let's keep going. Um, generates can, um, let me get a look. No, my bad. I, I, um, yeah. We reduce the time it takes to break pallets and, uh, break walls by 10%. Not a big deal, but still it's 10%, so if you add that on to another perk, that's great. Now, Brutal Strength actually might feel a little bit more brutal. Um... Generators can also be kicked 10% faster than before. Now, 1.8 seconds was 2 seconds. Okay, so, again, that's better. Um, other perks are going to help this, too. Brutal strength. Um, I know they're saying that this is small, but it, it is a big deal in the end. This is, this is a big deal. Um, they reduce the, the cooldown for successful basic attacks by 10%. That's literally two stacks of make your own, or um, save the best for last. That's crazy. Like, that's, that's really crazy. So, I mean, don't get me wrong. Just by itself, it's not super strong. But it does add up. For sure. And with other perks and, like, coinciding with this, like, whoa. Um, the duration of survivor's speed boost upon being hit is now 10%. Was one po uh, now 1.8 was 2. That's really good. Basically, when you hit a survivor, like, they can't go as far anymore. So, like, the chase actually feels like a chase. Um, yeah, it's, it's great. Um, finally, we've tweaked Bloodlust. I'm glad that they're making Bloodlust easier because the whole point of Bloodlust really is for that if you're taking too long in an area, you're not just screwed. All these fucking super good players are like, we don't need Bloodlust. And it just it irritated the shit out of me because it's like all the noobs, or myself if you're going against a really good team, because um, I would say I'm just average. 
you're screwed. You were literally screwed, man. So, I mean, it's it's tough. It's, it's a tough note, but, I mean, it's, it's just... Um, I'm glad that they messed with what they need to. Um, because... It's as we say here. The first tier will not be changed, and it doesn't really need to. I, I think it only should be bettered for the uh, later half, because, I mean... You should not be in a chase for 45 seconds. You just should not. And you shouldn't, so... That's my point. Um, camping and tunneling. Um, I think I saw a video on Ots talking about this, all these changes, too. Um, if you don't know who he is, just check him. He's amazing. You, you probably have, though, because he's the most popular Dead by Daily um, streamer and, I believe, YouTuber. But, basically, they don't really talk about camping and how to, like, deal with it. They only talk about tunneling, so I think that could give a few issues. But, um, more or less, they're making a weird version of, uh... What do you call it? Borrow time base kit, right? So, um, anyhow, so, let me look, which I understand a lot of these perks being used, because you don't want to be targeted, but they're being abused, like, hardcore abuse, and that's why, the like, people aren't playing with this anymore, so. Um, moving forward, survivors will now receive a five-second endurance effect after being unhooked. This gives the unhooked survivor an opportunity to reach a nearby window or pallet, or for another survivor to position themselves for protection hit. Perfect. That's what you want. Sounds great. Uh, hey, Purple. How you doing, man? Mwah. Oof, my, subscri my subscription just ran out. Um, yo, yo, maybe maybe subs. <laughs> um, but additionally, the uh, unhooked survivor will receive a 7% haste effect for 5 seconds. That's good. That's 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 good. Honestly, I don't, I don't mind that. I think it's dumb that you could theoretically just be unhooked if nobody has a, a perk like borrow time. And then you're just down. That's stupid. That's, that's just dumb, man. They're wrong. Like, you have power as a killer, but, like, it kind of makes playing a survivor, like, you do need to use some perks. So, I, I don't mind that. That's great. Um, both uh, effects will be canceled prematurely if the unhooked survivor performs what we now call a, conspicu uh, a conspicuous action. Um, basically, just explaining what these are, right? So, preparing a generator, killing yourself or others. Um, cleansing or blessing a totem, sabotaging a hook, unhooking others, and opening an exit gate. Don't mind that at all, okay? So that's perfect. I think I think the idea of adding that was perfect, because I remember I quit the game when Decisive was too strong. And I know a lot of other people did, because Decisive was bullshit. So, um, let's keep going. Meta perk changes. Oh, boy. Okay, so here's some charts basically showing what there, there are. And I'll just read these really quick, because like, here's the basic... Gist of what were the uh, meta perks. So you got barbecue and chili for killer, um, hex ruin, pop quiz weasel, corrupt intervention, tinker, noed, and skirtchuk pain residence. Um, for survivors, that's dead hard, borrow time, decisive strike, iron will, self care, and spine chill. Um, I'll go into this, but I think I think there are some still not grabbed that they should have messed with. Um, cough, cough, circle of healing, but um, we'll move on. We'll move on. Um, I also think prove that I self been grabbed, but whatever. Um, so, Barbecue and Chili, the one thing that they're doing is they're getting rid of the blood point status effect. I don't really mind that. That's great. That basically makes it so that people can't use the same bullshit excuse. So it's like, I'm just doing it to farm blood points, which I get it. I do. But now, not only do we not have that excuse, but, um, I do think the fact that they're, like, reducing the grind by so much, I mean, this, this perk is not needed. So, um, Hex Ruin. Um... I think, I think they screwed this perk way too much, man. You literally have it. They literally have the power, dude. I don't know who thought this was a good idea. I understand that the made it so kicking generators are stronger, but, like, it's, it's, they kind of made this perk invaluable now. Because, like, people already are looking to, like, mess with totems now because of how many totem-based perks there are. And the whole point of this was that, like, even if it does go out... You had so much value from someone not sticking to a gen. Like, kind of like how this, the killer is now, like, forces to stay on you. The survivor is now forced to stay on the gen or else. Um, it being halved like this, like, it's going to take forever for a gen to regress. And it's just, it's it's pathetic. Not only that, right? Which, if it just stayed at a half, then, like, okay, whatever, this sucks. Still, I would have been pissed. But, after a survivor is killed, Hex Rune will automatically deactivate. That's so stupid. One or the other is my opinion. That's my opinion. I think... I feel like Pop will still be decent. 
Oh, when I look, yeah, I agree. No, yeah, I, I totally agree. When I um, I agree. Let's keep going. Um, let's keep in mind they added more time to Jens as well. I agree. I do agree with that. But my, my issue is that what I think they should have done completely is just added, um, after survivors killed, Hex Rune will automatically deactivate. I agree. Like, I, I think it would serve its name good, because, like, ruin. If you lose a team member, that's, you're kind of ruined, you know? So, like, I think the idea of having it fair, where it's like, okay, your teammate's gone now, you don't need this as much. That's, I think, very good. And I think that's fine. Um, but the fact that they added both these, nobody's going to run this. I don't see I don't see how anybody would run this unless it's just to, like, be with another general regression. But what I see happening is that people are not going to use general regression even more because of this, you know? Um, but I might be wrong. I, I could see. Because I, I do know people that do ruin and pop all the time. So, um, we'll see how it goes. I don't think people are going to use this perk nearly nearly as much as they used to them so um we'll see pop goes the weasel current effect after hooking survivor the next generator you kick within the time limit instantly loses 25 percent of its total progress um so what it's okay let me i gotta explain this because it can get a little confusing if you read too quick um this perk now removes 20 percent of the gen of the generator's current not total progress so for example, if it's like 80% and you kick it, it's not going to like take away 20% and make it 60%, right? What it's going to do is it's going to take 20% of 80, right? Still very good. I still think it's very good. It does like work and when you have that extra 2.5% when you kick a gen, it's it's pretty darn strong. I, I think it's pretty great. So. I still like this. I think um, pop is one of the best ways you could deal with a perk like this, because um, it's just, it's a very impressive perk. Granted, though, I don't. Okay, my personal opinion. I, I'm okay with people messing with this perk. I just don't see the point, because like this perk is not OP by any means, in my opinion. I think it's strong, but like it's only after you get some hooks. Which, it, it pays off, what, is what I'm saying. And now it's going to not pay off nearly as much. Especially since they, like, lowered the time for you to get somewhere. So I'd buff it with, like, a little bit more time to actually be able to do stuff with this. If that makes sense. Um, but, I digress. It, I still think this works really well, though. I think Pop is great. I just, it, it, I think it's funny that people mess with it. Granted, I don't use it all the time. I think it's a good perk, but I'm not, like, crazy about it. So, Corrupt Intervention. One of the best ways to deal with it, too. Um, Corrupted Intervention is more or less so that survivors can't just gen rush really right, right away. They have to actually go, like, towards you, um, while trying to look for a gen. A lot of times, though, and I would do this personally, is I would just go boa, find someone, and just start the match lickety-split, right? Um, now how it works is that, uh, the perk will deactivate once the survivor is, uh, in the dying state. That's fine. It works perfect. I, I enjoy it. Let's move on. Um, Tinkerer. More or less the only difference they do with this is that um, now it'll only do once per gen. I agree. This is a very, very strong perk. And there's a lot of other perks that are underpowered because of that. Um, this is perfect for shaking up the meta. Don't get me wrong. As a killer main, I'm very biased towards thinking that it'd be nice to have it more. But I do know as a fair game and being um, unbiased, it's good for the game for you to be able to have multiple... Um, or reading, or I shouldn't say, uh, not, not or reading, um, noti notification perks. And, um, the information you get with, uh, this and other perks would be great. So, um, no ed. Perfect what they did here. More or less what they did was, um, they didn't make it weaker, in my opinion, but they made it so that a survivor's not going to just be like, oh, it's no ed. All right, you're, you're dead. Screw you. We're gone. What they're doing now is that, um, you can actually see where it is, uh, the totem. Um, once it's activated, more or less. Um, so it starts on activation with a four meter radius where you can actually see where it's been, you know, where the totem is. And then after that, it increases to 24, um, over 30 seconds. Really strong. I still enjoy it, but it makes it so people don't want to give up. It actually is like, okay, it's on motherfucker. You know, I, I think it's great. Um, Scorch Hook Pain Resonance. The whole reason people use this was because it was, as this thing says right here, a jack of all trades. And now what they're doing more or less is making it so it's like, Oh, well, we can't have that. I, I don't think pain resonance had to be changed. 
when you hook a survivor, it takes away 50%. And it gets fuel off the gen. I don't think it's a problem. I don't think it's a problem at all. Honestly, I think because of Jack all trades, Master of None was it was perfect. But I, I, my issue is that they're, they're I feel like they're grabbing this perk and they're like, oh, well because people use it, we gotta get we gotta fuck with it too. And it's like, just because it is meta doesn't mean it's overpowered. You know what I mean? And that's how I feel. Um, if it is meta and overpowered, which a lot of perks are, don't get me wrong, whatever. But this isn't, and that's where I get a little bit of my um. Grr from so um but basically what they did was they removed the loud noise notification and instead of exploding the effect of gender will now spark upon losing progress <sighs> i don't like that man i just don't i don't think it's good i i think honestly this perk is much better as an informational perk than actually like reducing progress i would prefer it if they got rid of like it'd make it like a five percent progress decrease i i would prefer that and then have more information because that's how i would use them i think other people would too unless you didn't which i don't know but i mean just i don't know i don't, I don't think this is the way to go about it but um it's up to them i'm gonna keep going oh fuck me dude okay dead hard um, I hate this perk. I, I personally hate this perk, and I think this is why people are quitting. People use this dead hard so much, and it is literally the reason why a lot of killers are now, like, useless. And why cheaters are able to get away with what they can. They did not do a good job explaining this, and I think this can be interpreted in a lot of ways. Which is why I think I'm still going to be very angry about the way they deal with dead hard. Because they, they should have dealt with this a lot better. The buff dead hard once when already was being used and it was stupid as shit. I'm gonna go to bed to get eyeball. Hey, you're good one. Okay, each one. See you in a bit. Um, dead hard was stupid as shit. Because what it did was not only did it give you some distance, but it, it gave you eye frames. So more or less, you'd be invincible, immune to any damage, and I think it's stupid. Um, especially when you'd still make a grunt of pain or you would literally see blood coming off your character. It was horrible. Um, and I have played against it multiple times and I've seen videos where Dead Hard, because of that iframes, has abused the match so much that I made other killers just not even viable. Um, I don't mind the distance. I don't think distance is a problem at all. I think if you play with it smart and you use that distance, perfect. Perfect, right? Um, it adds more time to your, your run. And there's other exhaustion perks that do the same thing. So I don't really, again, I don't see an issue with having an at-hand moment of that small, short-distance push. My issue is the iframes, and I don't understand how the developers are still like, okay, this is fine. Like, literally, if someone dead hearts at the right moment, and there's a hatchet coming right at you, because you have to time that hatchet perfectly, and it hits, no, pfft, dead hard and i'm saying you're going parallel with the thing you dead hard it still hits you and it doesn't do anything um i've seen it with m doing with demigorgon you go Ooh, wow dead hard you still hit them doesn't do a fucking thing um i've seen it with a lot of other characters with m2s and it's just it's stupid it is so fucking stupid so um i have an issue with that perk how it works now is um it will not pro pro provide an endurance effect for one second. And if you do it right, you'll prevent the hit and gain a uh, movement speed boost. This will remove dead harding for distance. And make it solely for solely used to dodge hits. So, I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. We're going to look this up. Endurance effect DVD. Survivors affected by the endurance status effect are temporarily hardened and can resist a hit. Hmm. Okay. So, quite literally, you did nothing to fucking fix the problem that everybody was complaining about. 
Now what this will encourage is that people can still cheat with Dead Hard. Because nobody was... I don't think... I didn't know anyone that was complaining about the distance shit. I don't know a fucking person. It was all about iframes. All you fucking did was add... You kept the iframes. You kept the iframes. And... Now it's easier. Because it's hard to bait it now. Maybe if you see the little white eye line, but it's like, it's not like, okay, this person fucking clearly moved and they moved out of the way of where they're going. It's like now right around the corner, what happens sometimes, right? If someone like dead hard wrong is they move past like where they're trying to take their corner and then you can still get them because like, you know, they, they had, a, they fucked up the timing with the, because of the move. Now it's just like, okay, endurance, we I'm invincible, I'm fucking Superman. So it's, it's very, I, I hate it. I fucking despise this and I don't think the dealt with this correctly at all. This perk fucking sucks and people are going to keep using it. They will keep using this perk. So, oh, anyways, um, stupid. Decisive strike. Um, they did a great job with this. Um, basically the issue was a lot of people will just save decisive strike at times for end game. If you have a decisive strike at end game, like you're, you're literally fucked. People are just going to waste your time and you can't do anything about it. Basically what it does is, um, with decisive strike now, um, it, it deactivates that exit gates, which is great. Um, I love that. I think that's great. So, um, I enjoyed that. Um, it deactivates once the exit gates are powered. So, I enjoyed that. Um, in addition, the stun duration has been reduced from 5 seconds to 3 seconds. Okay. M1 killers, I like that. I, I, I personally think that's great for M1. I think that's really fucking bad for uh high mobility characters because like there's nothing a survivor can really do about that i think um in my opinion it should stay at five or you should make this might sound weird but like the killer exhausted basically no more tokens for their mobility before they come at you so that's my point um other than that though this is perfect i like it um Borrow time. Um, they basically made borrow time base kit. So what they're doing now is they're making it just a longer movement speed duration, which again doesn't do a whole lot against camping killers, but whatever. Sorry, I got I got some, but okay. Iron will. Um, I enjoy Iron Will, how it was, but at the same time, I can see how it can be, uh, very annoying, and, um, I think this does work a little bit better, because, I mean, it's kind of stupid, at least in, like, I guess a little bit more reality sense, where it's, like, you're completely silent even when you're running and shit. Like, this, this is a little bit better, where it's, like, you can only go up to 75% quieter. Um, the reason this is really bad is because there's killers, like, literally, like, spirit, where, like, you couldn't hear them. You literally could not hear anyone with Iron Will. And I also believe that they wouldn't scream when you had Doctor. So there was literally killers that, like, were just nullified completely because of this perk. Now, that's fucked. So, I enjoy that. Basically, it makes other killers, like, viable again because they're doing this. Um, self-care. The heal speed will now be lowered to 35% at Tier 3, and the item efficiency bonus has been removed entirely. They only should have done the last part, the item efficiency bonus. It's still nice to have that bonus, but, I mean, that's that's OP, especially with how there's all these other healing perks that, when they stack, it's crazy. Um, 42 seconds and 20. Dude, you're fine. Don't worry about it, Joff. You're good, man. I'm glad to see you here. How you doing, big boy? Mwah. Um, I swear there better be an animation for Dead Heart. I hear you, Barrel. <laughs> um, so, it being lowered to 35% is a bit crazy. Um, Ots talked about how med kits and all that need to be nerfed themselves. And I agree. Uh, it's just, it's, it's tough. This, honestly, this is all is very tough. Um, I don't know exactly what we should do, but uh, basically this perk by itself with what it has. And this is where it gets tricky. These perks by themselves should work without you always needing another Band-Aid perk to help with it.
But the game has made it so that now you need these band-aid perks. Or else it's all just not viable, you know? So it's it's just tricky. It's it's very annoying and tricky, but what you gonna do? Um I think it's fine though. I think it's fine. Um, but you're basically gonna have to like you have to sit there for forty five to fifty five minutes uh, seconds, I believe. I forgot what it actually is, but that's how long it's gonna take for you to heal now, and that's that's very long and it's close to a generator. So kinda bullshit. Um or um, uh, half a generator, so that's kind of bullshit. Uh, spine Shield. This perk excels at alerting survivors when a killer is approaching, and in high skill lobbies, a vault speed increases, becoming the primary draw. Um, basically, here's, here's how it works. Spine Shield will not only activate if the killer is a, has a clear line of sight of the survivor, um, this will remove the awkward counterplay where the killer must look away to ensure a stealthy approach. Um, Next, we will be adding a short 0.5 seconds lingering effect to Spine Chill. This will re prevent the perk from flickering when the killer looks around and make the action speed boost more consistent. Okay. Finally, we will be removing the vault speed bonus entirely as it does not suit the perk's nature. So, I have an issue with this completely. Um, first off, the whole point of Spine Chill is that you can tell when the killer is looking at you. If you can see the fucking killer, you don't need this perk. People are not using this perk for the bonuses. That's a, it's a nice little thing. But they're not using it for the bonuses. They're using it to know what the killer is looking at, most likely. And they're just ba they're doubling down on the bonuses. I do agree that you should not be like screwed if you can tell someone's looking at you. Like, like there should be some kind of counterplay instead of just having to look around like awkwardly. But, I mean, I think, again, Ott said it. Stealthy approach. You need to fucking make it so that if you're a killer and there's a stealthy mechanic behind them, you can just stare at them and they won't be able to get, like, spine chill right away, right? Unless there's clear line of sight. Um, but other than that, I mean, I kind of... What I'm scared of is that people are just going to just abandon this perk completely now, you know? Um, the only thing that's nice is that the sh there's a short lingering effect with Spy and Chill. That's that's about it, you know. But other than that, I mean, this perk just kind of just got ripped apart, man. So, um, anyways, now I'm at a perk changes. Most of this I heavily like. I'll go over what I don't like though. So, um, overcharge along with the current effects. Um, overcharge will now cause kick generators regression speed to grow from 100% to 400 over the course of 30 seconds. Survivors will want to stop the strainer from regressing as soon as possible. I love that. I love that. I love that. Um, basically, Overcharge was not strong at all at the time. Um, it had a little bit of nice shit going along with it, but like you need some other perks to kind of buff it, in my opinion. Um, now, if you want to run Overcharge, you don't need Pop, more or less. You don't need Pop to run Overcharge, which is what I would do all the time, and uh, it makes this perk very viable, so I like that. Eruption. Eruption released a uh, with fairly safe numbers, but upon reflection, we were comfortable with increasing them. We've upped the generator regression penalty to 10%. Nice. Um, because, again, I, I usually wouldn't use this fucking perk. It's, it was shit, and a lot of people thought so, too. Um, and the duration of the incapacitated effect to 15, 20, and 25 seconds. Um, That's a high number for being inca incapacitated. Um... I don't really know how to feel about that. Just because, again, you can't do anything when you're incapacitated. Um, so, 25 seconds is a long time to not be able to do shit. But, um, and my issue is that this is going to happen a lot more now because, like, there's actually a reason for, like, killers to kick gens. But I guess we'll have to see how this goes. I'm just worried that, like, there's going to be solo people, and they're going to be screwed. Like, if you go into so solo queue and you play this, you are fucked. Hard. So, um, anyways. Knockout. Those of you who like to leave survivors on the ground can have a little bit more peace of, peace of mind. In addition to its current effect, Knockout will be will cause dying survivors to crawl 50% slower in 15 seconds and reduce their recovery speed by 25%. Um. Okay. I mean. It's Okay. Um, 
I, I mean, it's a buff, but the thing is, like, I think Knockout worked fine before. I just, I don't know. That's all I gotta say. I mean, it, it's fine. This works fine. It's just, I don't know. <laughs> okay, it's just, and this is coming from a killer man. I don't really know why they had to add that. Here's what I think, though. There's a lot of things that, it, it's going to be harder on only solo players. Like, if there's a team, like a duo, or not a duo, there's, if there's just a, a party member that's, like, in Discord, they can all handle this. They can all handle this, but you know who's going to suffer? The guy that gets no information because he's playing solo. Ding, 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 ding. You know, um, I shouldn't say always me, but like most of the time, you know, it's people like, fuck, I'm me. So, um, my issue is that, and I think what honestly they should do, and I think it'll make the game better, and I don't know why they fucking haven't done it, and I only, only think the reason they did is because you have to deal with all the assholes, and that happens. Assholes are in games, but there's a reason why other games grow a lot faster because of it, and that is voice chat. Voice chat is amazing. They should add voice chat to this fucking game. They should add a voice chat to this game. I don't know why they don't. I think it'd be really fucking awesome to have a killer that had a voice chat and then the survivor that had a voice chat. And then the killer could literally hear you in voice chat. They might not be able to say anything. That's fine. But if the killer could hear you in voice chat and then the survivors could... I mean, dude, voice chat would be such a great idea for this game. I just... I really do think it'd be amazing. But no. So, anyways... It'd be great. The only issue with voice chat is that a lot of aura reading perks would be nullified. But the thing is, people are using it. They only have Discord to use it. So, again, voice chat's great. If you want an example of it actually working and how it's not overly OP, look at um, Evil Dead the Game. That's all I gotta say. Great example of it. Let's keep going. Chloro Chlorophobia. Phobia. I can't fucking read. Sorry. Don't. Sorry. <laughs> um, to make healing in the ta or, uh, killer's territory is even more unappealing. Uh, chlorophobia. I can't read. Sorry. Will now increase the speed of uh, skill checks by 50% on top of its current effect. That's great. This perk was terrible. It was fucking utterly terrible. And now people are... Now that people are using it like that, I love that. Uh, I, I think that's great because it's going to make it so that not only can you not really heal fast enough, but even if they somehow do have, like, good healing stuff. Um, because, I mean, most of the time they're in your territories. They're not going to even be healing, you know, unless it's, like, a cheeky in-your-face kind of thing. The fact that there's 50% skill checks make it so, like, they will not be able to heal. Like, it is literally impossible, more or less, to heal around you. Or even do skill checks on a gen. So, essentially, they can't do shit in front of you anymore. I love that. Dark Devotion. One of my favorite perks. One of my favorite perks ever. Um, it transfers your, um, what do you call it? Terror radius onto the obsession to hit it. Before, there would only be M1 attack, so a basic attack. Now, it's any attack, and I love that. So, now, any killer can use this. Perfect. You will see so many more cool, um, game mechanics happening with this. So, um, Jolt. All they did was they removed the cooldown. That's perfect. This perk should be removed with the cooldown. It's stupid that they had a cooldown. The cooldown was fucking stupid. I cannot... I'm, I'm going... To, it, it was stupid. I hate even saying jolt, because it should be... It should be surge. But whatever, it's stupid. The fact that it is what it is now, and it has no cooldown, it's going to make this perk actually, like, er, oppressive, and you shouldn't have to fucking think about Jen just going down like that. You should just be able to play it the way it is. So, that's my rant. Um... I'm sorry I'm late again, Blue. Drain again. I hope you've missed me at least. Of course I missed you, Bloodfam. I'm glad you're back. I guess who's also back. <laughs> so, um, don't worry about Bloodfam. Um, Lethal Pursuer. So, you like aura reading. Um, basically all this does was it, it adds a duration of uh, two seconds to all aura reading effects. That's awesome, dude. I would honestly want to use Lethal Pursuer more now. Because every single time I use it, I'm like, I'm always debating like, oh, am I going to, is this a stupid choice? Because I might find the survivor easily anyways. And now it's like, no, because even if you don't, like, use it properly at the beginning of the game, you still have a little bit of a, of a something that you want to have. And I think that's awesome. So, Leave the Pursuer is great. I love it. They did a great job with this perk. Um, Scourge Hook Pain. Uh, Gift of Pain. Um, we'll also be increasing the action penalty, uh, action speed penalty to 60%. Um, I think it's perfect. I think it's fine. I mean, you don't like it. Fuck you, get per you know, get 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 nerfed, bro. Don't be a noob, don't get hooked. <laughs> um, Thanatophobia. The uh, The up this, and I already think it's an okay perk. 
Um, but if you want to up it just a tiny bit, which they have, I mean, usually it's 20, but now it's 22. I mean, whatever. It's, it's, it's only a slight increase, and I, I'm fine with that, so. Um, I kind of liked how Thanatophobia was before. Let me look it up. Like, I think Thanatophobia, TBD, original. Where is it? Healing actions, that's what it was. So all the way back one, um, it used to mess with healing actions. Which I think is so funny because this perk would be used so much nowadays. And now it doesn't do that. Yeah. It's, I think healing should have been still there. Healing, yeah. So, the whole thing is they should have added healing back. Because I don't see an issue with this when it comes to healing, in my opinion. I just, I just don't. So, anyways. Um, yeah, let's keep going. Um, so, I'm taking it that you saw the Reddit post I sent you in DMs about the Perks Blue. No, I have not. I've been busy spending time with... Uh, family. Um, but I will check it out. Hold on. I didn't see that because you sent me all this uh, other stuff. I'm looking at DMs. You could send me all Reddit. You didn't send me anything in Reddit. Yeah, you didn't send me anything about Reddit. You just sent me, um, it's not in DMs. You might have sent me somewhere else, but you sent me other, uh, art stuff. What do you call it? From the, uh, Dolly. So. Um, moving on though, um, where was I? Oh, Monster Shrine. Um, basically now they're all scourge hooks and, uh, there's faster progression, but only if you're farther away. Perfect. Monster Shrine was shit. Now it's actually useful. <laughs> now it's actually kind of useful, so I'll take it, man. I like, yeah, that's, that's great. Yeah. Um, Calm Spirit, basically now, um... You can open all these things silently um, at a reduced speed. That's fine. That's fine. Um, no, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, Saboteur. Uh, all it does now is that you can see skirt chokes. That's perfect. This perk, I think it was already pretty good, but the fact you can do that now is like, it makes it actually like really, everyone's going to use it. Um, Botany Knowledge. I hate this. You have all these other fucking perks to increase it, and you put this to fucking 50%. If people want to be a fucking healing maniac, they can bring a med kit now. Circle of healing. Um, Self-care. Uh, and then botany knowledge. If you want to bring another fucking perk to help them heal, they can do that. Like, this is bullshit. Like, this is literally fucking bullshit, dude. Whatever, though. The only reason people didn't use botany knowledge is because they're using other perks like dead heart and shit, and they don't need this because they've already got strong enough healing. It's the only reason. It's not that the strong need. It's not like this perk needed to be buffed. So that's stupid. Off the record's also stupid. Um, they made it so that now you can gain the endurance status effect for uh, 60, 70, and then up to 80 seconds. It's lost when you do a conspicuous action. Um, this is a long time, but anything can, you know, cancel it. <sighs> this is going to be the new, like, decisive, I think, for, and, and for end games. Like, if you want to just fucking run away at the end, like, you can with this. Like, there's really nothing you can do. So. We'll see how this game goes. But I think, I think it's going to make killers feel helpless again when it comes to this perk, and I do not like that. Lucky break, um... The increase it by one second every single time you're healing a survivor. Whatever. Perfect. Cool. Um. Pharmacy. Um. This is a thing that nobody even asked for. And I don't think anybody really even cares. Basically. They're, they're calling something like a med kit goblin. Which I mean I think is really funny. Because like. The, okay. They're talking about how people just steal med kits. And go through and grab them with pharmacy. Which I think is stupid. Because the whole. Th the whole point of at least what I see is when you find this quote unquote med kit goblin is when people are doing the rift. 
which is like crabbing, like healing yourself, blah, 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 with a med kit. So if you don't want people to do that, then devs, how about you make your rifts not so fucking grindy? Which they did fix, by the way. They did. I'm really gra- I'm grateful. I'm grateful. If you guys didn't see that too, that was a great change. But I'm just saying, that's that's probably why people are doing it. So, um, Soul Survivor. In addition to hiding your aura, Soul Survivor will now increase the general uh, repair speed by 75% and your exit and hatch action speed by 50%. Um, that's amazing. That's great. I love that. That's perfect. That's exactly what you need. So, um, I'll take that. That's. It makes it feel like you're a Soul Survivor, actually. You got some kind of chance. So, I'll give it, you know. Distortion. For those who like to stay hidden, we've added a way to regain distortion tokens. Gain one token for every three seconds spent within the car- killer's terror radius. Yeah, I, I like that. The only reason I didn't use distortion is because you couldn't recharge it. And it's kind of just a one-trick pony. And once you have other perks to do shit to it, it's like you're fucked. So, um, I like it. I think it's great. Um, perfect. Lightweight. In addition to uh, Lightweight's existing effects, your, scrap mar- uh, your scratch marks will be more specific, uh, sporadic. Um, making you harder to track your scratch marks will also fade five for three seconds sooner up to uh, up from one two three Perfect perfect um I think this is perfect just because of the fact that it has a built-in now reverse Predator And I think it's great because predator, you know the rates one the fact that it's the opposite of that now, I think it actually would make you want to bring Predator in case someone brings this, you know? So I think it's it's perfect. Um, deja vu. To help survivors um, to help survivors power the three closest generators, so de- uh, Deja Vu will now grant a 5% repair speed bonus to the revealed generators. Okay. Whatever. Um, no one left behind. Beyond its current effects, no one left behind will grant a 7% movement speed bonus to any survivors who unhook. Additionally, the perk now activates when the gates are powered rather than opened. Cool. I mean, I I don't know, man. I sort of got this another like blood point thing, but like whatever. Um. Dark sense. We've changed the way dark sense works. When a generator is powered, dark sense activates. The next time the killer comes within twenty four meters of you, the aura is revealed for five, seven, ten seconds. Then Dark Sense deactivates. That's perfect. It makes it so that, like, it's not just kind of, like, wasted sometimes. Like, it's actually more useful than not. But, frankly, I think it worked better than was the way it was before. Um, especially if you're on comms. But, maybe, maybe this kind of slightly decreases comp play? Who knows, though. Tenacity, basically, you're quieter now, you move faster. Cool, whatever. Hope. There's no duration. I'm fine with that. I mean, I do think hope is one of those strong perks that nobody actually talks about. But, I mean, nobody fucking uses it anyway. And, um, I haven't really seen a whole lot of, like, end game clutches with it. But, I mean, we'll see. I, I might be wrong. I might be crazy wrong. So, we'll see. Um, overzealous. Cleansing a totem grants you repair speed bonus of 6, 7, 8. Now that bonus doubles if you cleanse a hex totem. Perfect. Um, we're going to live forever. This no, this is one. Yeah, yeah. Never mind. Never. Mind. I lied. I lied. The other one wasn't it. This is the one with the blood points. We don't want blood points to dictate which perks are, are used. So we remove the bonus blood points from. We're going to live forever. Um. Okay. Yep. And then um. Yeah. Okay. So there's another extent like secondary thing they added, but it's fine. That's it. Um. <sighs> There's a lot going on here, man. There's a lot, but, uh... What? What's up, DJ? Oh, hey, what's up, Alex? How you doing, big man? Welcome to the stream. I'm glad to see you. Man, it's been a hot minute since you've been... Wow, it's been a hot minute, man. Holy shit. How you doing, dude? Shit. Man, that's... It's been a hot minute, man. Ah, man, hell yeah. Man, I feel old now. I feel old. Anyway, so, um... How do I feel about this? I feel 50-50. Um, I think they did a lot good, a lot good, and this is going to change the game for the better, especially since this really was a big buff for killers. And I think the game needed that. Even if you're a fucking survivor main and you're heathing about it, it's going to suck when you have no one else to play with. And the fact they did this is perfect. So, um, big thumbs up. Perfect. Thank you, um, devs. 
I do think they had um, some issues though with other perks that they didn't fix yet. And I mean, I don't want to be that guy, but you gotta listen to your community, dude. Like some things are like clear. Like if a community is like, oh wow, it needs to be hundred percent better. Like just shut the fuck up. But you gotta think about all people that are playing. But like, for example, and this is the biggest thing I'm really gonna just rant about. There's still a lot of perks that are really strong they didn't even bring up, and they've kind of just made other perks like unbearably strong, and didn't deal with certain aspects just to coincide with a temporary band-aid fix for others like for example like camping if you're a bubba like you could still basically cancel out whatever borrowed time there was so but i think it's gonna be fine um oh yeah and then dead hearts fucking sucks you were fucked if you had de like dude dead hearts still sucks so um good how are you bro i'm doing fine i'm I've been I've been doing me I guess, <laughs> but that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, that was the developer update. I am hyped for when this all comes out. But if you guys didn't hear again, you have to prestige up to level six to get everything that you need. That's why we're going to be grinding like we are now.